Section 4 of The Christ is One by Cyril of Alexandria Translated by P. E. Pusey This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. How is one to conceive of that which is wisely spoken by the voice of Paul? For even though there be many gods, both in heaven and on earth, yet to us is one God, the Father from whom are all things, and we from him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and we through him. But there being one Lord Jesus Christ, and Paul having full well affirmed that through him all things have been brought to their birth, what shall we do, noble sirs, when ye distinguish from the assumed man, as ye call him, the word from forth God the Father? Which, are we to say, was the creator of all? The Son by nature from forth God the Father, that is, the only begotten. Yet does the priest to us of the divine mysteries say that through Jesus Christ were all things brought into being, and that he is one and only. I will recall that when investigating the name Christ, we said that it introduces to us the declaration of anointing, for on account of having been anointed would any be called Christ. Either, therefore, let them say that the word from forth God the Father has been anointed in his proper nature, and that he was in need of sanctification through the Spirit, and of participation from him, or let them teach how he is to be conceived of as Christ, who has never been anointed, and how the only begotten word of God will be called separately Jesus, although blessed Gabriel says to the Holy Virgin, Fear not, Mary, for lo, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bear a son, and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Do we then say that all things have been made through a man, and that he who in the last times of the world hath birth of a woman is creator of heaven and earth, and in short of all things that are in them? Do thou too say, for I will ask, has not the word been made flesh? Has he not been called son of man? Took he not bondman's form? Emptied he not himself, made in likeness of man, and found in fashion as man? If, therefore, they deny the economy, the divine disciples will withstand them, saying, And we saw and testify that the Father hath sent the Son, Saviour of the world. Whoso shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God abideth in him, and he in God. And again, herein is known the Spirit of God. Every spirit which confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God and every spirit which does not confess Jesus is not from God. Besides, what sense is it to conceive of a man that he has come in flesh, to one who is external to flesh, and who is of nature not ours, will rather belong the being made in flesh, also, and therewith coming into this world, together with remaining what he is. Hence, even though he have been made man, there is nothing to hinder our conceiving that through him were all things brought into being, and that he is conceived of as God, and co-eternal with the Father. For the Word, being God, has not been changed, even though he have assumed flesh, ensouled with a reasonable soul, not connecting a man with himself, as they say who innovate the faith, but himself made flesh, as I said, that is, man. For thus will the having been anointed befit him, nor meet with any objection. And he will be called Jesus, too, being himself in truth, he who underwent birth in the flesh from forth a woman. For thus hath he saved his own people, not as a man connected with God, but as God made in likeness of the imperiled, in order that in him first the human race might be reformed to what it was in the beginning, for all things were new in him. Hence we must refuse to think or to say that a man has been connected with God the Word, and been made partaker of his dignity, and that he possesses the sonship as a grace. Most entirely, for the sense of the sacred scripture acknowledges it not. But it is the invention rather of a mind loving novelty, and feeble, and weak, and unable to see the depth of the mystery. For where has anything of this kind been said in the Holy Scripture? For the divine Paul, stating full clearly the mystery of the incarnation of the Only Begotten, says, For since the little ones have partaken of flesh and blood, he too likewise partook of the same, 
in order that through death he might bring to naught him that has the power of death, that is, the devil. And elsewhere, for the impossibility of the law wherein it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in likeness of flesh of sin and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, in order that the ordinance of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. But we say that there has partaken of the blood and flesh, according to the mind befitting the inspired writers, not he who is in flesh and blood of his proper nature, and cannot be otherwise, but he who is not so, and is of other nature than ours, and that he has been made both from forth a woman, and in likeness of flesh of sin, who is for our sakes as we, together with being above us too, in order that he is conceived of as God. For the word has been made flesh, yet not flesh of sin, but in likeness of flesh of sin did he converse with them on earth as man, and has been made in likeness as we, yet not along with us under sin, but removed from knowing transgression. For the same was God alike, and man. But they who bear away, I know not how, from the only begotten, the so august and admirable economy, connect with him a man by way of accident, embellished with honours from without, and adorned with glory not his. And no true God, but partner and partaker with God, and son falsely so named, saviour that is himself saved, redeemer who is redeemed, albeit the blessed Paul has written thus. For the saving grace of God appeared to all men, in order that, denying impiety and worldly lusts, we might live soberly and religiously in the present life, awaiting the blessed hope and manifestation of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Yea, they say, for seeing that he was altogether vouchsafed, connected with God the Word, he too was called Great God, albeit made of the seed of David. For shame! What madness! Affirming that they are wise, they became foolish, as it is written. For they transform, as I said, the force of the mystery of Christ into all that is opposite. And their saying that he has been vouchsafed will be naught else than declaring that he is mere man, and in ill counsel severing him into an utter diversity, so that a pair of sons be conceived of to be worshipped, whereof one is so by nature and truly, the other adopted and bastard, and having nothing that is his own, that to him too, along with ourselves, it may be said, For what hast thou that thou receivest not? And then, whether will the all-wise Paul go, who says, For the Son of God, Christ Jesus, who was preached among you through me and Silvanus and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes. For how was he not yes and no, if he is said to be God, and is not God, if the names Son and Lord are falsely attributed to him? And if he be thus as they say, it will belong to him to have to say, But by the grace of God I am what I am. For that which belongs not by nature, but is from without, and introduced, and given by another, will not belong to the recipient, but to him who imparts it and bestows it. And how did he also say, I am the truth, if there is nothing true about him? Haply too was he comprehended by the darkness, if he lies. But he did not sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, as it is written. No, surely. And where is the emptiness, and of whom will it be conceived to have happened? For one cannot see any one emptied, but on the contrary being filled, albeit he has not fullness in his own nature. For he would not have needed what was another's, and it would have been superfluous to him to have received, if he had had of his own self-completeness, and sufficiency unto everything. But of Christ's fullness did all we receive, and the preaching of the inspired will not lie. For full is Christ, and nothing whatever is given to him, so far as he is conceived of as, and is, God even though to receive have been made his by reason of the measure of the manhood, and in that he became as we, to whom it will be said full rightly, For what hast thou that thou receivest not? Yea, he says, the word from forth God the Father is one Christ and Son and Lord. 
he who is forth of David's seed being connected with him. But, most excellent sirs, one may say to them, he who has another connected with him will not be conceived of as one, how could he, but as one with one, that is, with another. And these are full surely two. But he will be conceived to be in truth one son, if we say that the same is God the Word, divinely begotten from God, and in marvellous manner man, and from a woman after the flesh. But if, setting apart and severing him that is from the seed of David, they dismiss him from being in truth God and Son, and say rather that he is partner in sonship, and partaker of glory not his own. Not idly, as I suppose, shall we find the accusations against him by the Jews to have been made. For they said, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because thou, being man, makest thyself God. And indeed they do say that both very God and Son is the one Christ, that is, the word out of God taking by connection him who is of David's seed. But if the word out of God the Father is not he who is also according to the flesh from a woman, but is other with other, how will he be called Christ, who has not been anointed, as we already said? Therefore, if he who is of the seed of David is none other than the word from forth God the Father, let him be called also before time. Then how does the all-wise Paul, repelling the opinion, demand, as it were, with a question, and say, Jesus Christ yesterday and today? Is he the same for ever too? Or in another way too, for Jesus, he says, who is yesterday and today, will be the same for ever too, that is, recent and yesterday and today, albeit God the Word coexisteth with his own Father. They do wrong exceedingly, turning aside the truth unto that which in their unwisdom seems good to them, and corrupting the accuracy of the sacred scriptures. If now one say that Christ Jesus is also before time, he will not miss of the truth if the word which is before time is one Son and Lord, who in the last times underwent birth after the flesh of a woman. And that the word made man as we has not been changed. The spirit-clad has shown, saying, Jesus Christ, yesterday and today, the same too for ever. And yesterday indicates past time, today present time, for ever that which is future and to come. But if they think that they have thought out something clever in taking yesterday and today to mean recent, asserting and saying that he is yesterday and today, how will he be also for ever? we too will transfer the force of the question into the direct opposite. The word which is for ever, how will he take to himself yesterday and today, if Christ is one and has not been divided, as says the divine Paul? For that thus he would be known by us, you will know hence also. For although seen in the flesh, and having entered on the measures of the human nature, he has testified to himself his eternal being, saying, Verily I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And again, if I told you the things of earth, and ye believe not, how will ye believe if I tell you those of heaven? And no one hath gone up into heaven except he which descended from heaven, the Son of Man. For as word, which ever is and before the ages come down from heaven, and then the same appearing man as we, as one Christ and Lord, even when he was made flesh, does he say these things. Another argument, too, has been discovered by them. It is this. They say that he which is of the seed of David ought so to be called Son of God, as the word which is forth of God the Father is said to be Son of David, for neither is so by nature. Now let the mode of the true union come in so that the word be believed to have been made flesh, that is, man, and therefore son of David, not falsely, but as from forth him according to the flesh, having remained to what he was, that is, God out of God. And verily, the priests of the gospel preachings, knowing that the same is God alike and man, have told us of him. It is written of the blessed Baptist that, On the morrow he seeth Jesus coming to him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. 
This it is of whom I said, After me cometh a man which has been made before me, because he is prior to me. And I knew him not, but in order that he should be manifested to Israel, therefore came I baptizing in water. Understand, therefore, how he saying a man, and calling him a lamb, says that none other is he who taketh away the sin of the world, and hath allotted to him this great and truly vast and God-befitting dignity. And he says that he is before and prior to him, albeit made after him, I mean according to the time of the generation after the flesh. For if Emmanuel is late born as man, yet he was before every time as God. His therefore is both the recent, humanly, and the eternal, divinely. Hence the all-excellent Peter, too, looking on the word not bare nor without flesh, but appearing in flesh and blood, clearly and unerringly made his tribute of faith in him, saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, and heard in reply, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood revealed it not to thee, but my Father which is in heaven. But were not the mystery deep, and God in the flesh, but only a man having according to them the sonship by grace, how should he have needed an initiator so great that no one of them on earth revealed it to the disciples, but that he had the Father himself as his instructor in this? And the divine disciples, too, seeing him once traversing the expanse of the sea, were astonished at the miracle, and confessed the faith, saying, Truly, thou art the Son of God. Yet if he is bastard, and falsely called, and has from adoption that he is son, let them accuse the disciples of falsehood, and that when they swear it. For they have added, Truly, affirming that he is the Son of God the Father. You speak most excellently. How, too, has the Son of Man his own angels, and shines forth in the glory of his Father? For he says, The Son of Man is about to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And again, the Son of Man will send his angels. And if they disbelieve yet, even seeing him crowned in God-befitting glory and dignity so splendid and supreme, they shall hear him say, If ye believe me not, believe my works. And again, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. For the beholding in a man the excellency of the unspeakable glory, supplied not as another's, nor in the light of a favor, but his very own, how will it not persuade us that he is God in likeness as we, and truly Son of God who is over all? He affirmed, he says, that his were the angels, and he was made the worker of these signs, the Word indwelling him, and having imparted to him his own glory and operation. For it is written, Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil. Appointed, therefore, both with power and with the Spirit, was he a wonder-worker. Then, since the Word being God, both holy, and having essentially and by nature all might, will never need either power from another, or an imparted holiness, who now is he who has been anointed with power and the Holy Ghost? They will perhaps say, the man who is assumed by connection. He therefore is Jesus Christ by himself, and separately, of whom too the all-wise Paul says, Yet to us one God the Father, from whom all things, and we from him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things, and we through him. How then, tell me, are all things through a man? Why is he ranked as son with the Father, and that immediately, no one intervening? And wherever shall we put the only begotten, when we have brought into his place the man, and that, as he says, inwrought by him, and honored because of him? Has not their argument outstepped what is reasonable? Is it not born beyond bound? And, as having utterly missed of the truth, will it not reasonably incur laughter? The word of God, he says, has been called man in some such way as this, as the man who was assumed by him was born in Bethlehem of Judea, but is called a Nazarene, because he dwelt at Nazareth, so too God the Word is called man, because he dwelt in man. 
O oh, understanding senile, and mind unstrung, and knowing how to stutter, and naught else! Rouse ye, ye drunkards, from their wine! Let one say to the opponents, Why do ye violence to the truth? And, turning aside the force of the divine doctrines, are borne forth of the king's way. The word, as it seems, has no longer been made flesh, according to the scriptures, but rather a dweller in man, and it were meet that he should be called of man, not man, just as he who dwelt at Nazareth was called of Nazareth, and not Nazareth. And I think that there is nothing at all to hinder, if they think that their foolish invention is right, that together with the Son, the Father, and also the Holy Ghost should be called man. For the fullness of the holy and consubstantial trinity dwelleth in us through the Spirit. And verily Paul saith, Do ye not know that ye are God's temple, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Yea, in Christ himself, if a man love me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. Yet the Father has never been called man, nor yet has the Holy Ghost by reason of indwelling in us. But those men laugh at the mystery of the Incarnation, and twist round unto what is discordant the doctrines of the Church, which are so right and worthy of being heard. End of section 4